Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. Well, it is the postseason pitching dilemma that gives coaches ulcers. When exactly is it that you throw your ace? Do you try to sneak through a regional or district semifinal with your number two guy and hope you get a chance to use your top gun in the title game? Or, you, or do you adhere to the logic that you have to win the first game at all costs to get to the very next one? Quincy High boss Brigham John opted to roll the dice tonight, holding all-conference pick Andrew Eilers for Saturday and trusting D Drake Green to get him through today. It proved to be a pretty good gamble for the Blue Devils because Green couldn't have pitched much better at the expense of Alton. Very economical strikeout to start things off. Then he got some ground balls out of this, including a little help right here at second base from Jacob Job, ranging and shutting down Alton. Quincy High up, by the way, one nothing at this point, scoring an unearned run. More from Mr. Green dealing the strikeouts. Unfortunately, disaster came in one felled defensive swoop. Two aboard. The Blue Devils will throw one away right here. It cost them two runs and cost them essentially the ball game at that point. That was really the difference of the game as Quincy High gives up one more and loses a three to one decision to see their season come to an end. Strange ball game. Stranger goings on today, though, in Pawnee between Grigsville Perry and Pawnee. We're talking about sectional semifinal action today between two very talented teams with two very talented pitchers. Ethan Crane opposed by this guy, Caleb Bradshaw, the big fella from Grigsville Perry, just absolutely gunning the ball today. How about this? Tornadoes with a pair aboard on airs. A little butt action right here. And Ethan Crane, who threw such a good game. You hate to see this happen to a kid, but he throws away what would turn out to be the only run of the entire ball game. In fact, Ethan Crane was so good on the day, he didn't give up a single hit. Grigsville Perry, no hits today. Their defense, their pitching, good enough. The rare 3 6 1 double play right here as Kale Henneman is gunned at first base. Wow, the Tornadoes just living up to all the billing today. They didn't need hits to win it. Bradshaw and the defense get it done. Grigsville Perry is headed off to the sectional championship game. One to nothing, your final as they beat Pawnee in what was an absolute strange, but you know what, you'll take it type of game. Up next for them, the winner of the Central versus Mount Pulaski game, the Panthers taking on the Hilltoppers earlier in the day, and the Hilltoppers would be generous early in this game. Pitching woes, wild pitch right here allows this guy, Michael Johnson, the All-State football guy, to rumble home. It's one to nothing Central. It would stay that way all the way to the bottom of the sixth. Tell you what, some great defense from Central as well as Taylor Hyman is well defended here at shortstop by Johnny Aiden. Great throw at first to get the Hilltopper runner. Bottom of the sixth, though, things go awry in many different ways. We had a collision out the outfield, put runners on the corners with just one out, and then all of a sudden, Mount Blasky started hitting the ball. A couple of big hits, including one here by Mr. Huff, kind of sealed the deal on the ball game, and Central's fine season comes to an end. So it will be Mount Pulaski versus Grigsville Perry on Saturday at 10 a.m. in Pawnee for the championship of that sectional. We also have some details next for Beardstown. Sherrard was a winner today, one to nothing in a pitching duel over Brimfield. So in baseball at Macomb coming up on Saturday, it will be Sherrard versus Beardstown for the championship there. Unfortunate news on the soccer side of things in Southeast Iowa. Keokuk's fine season comes to an end on the road tonight at the hands of Clear Creek Amana. Final count in that game was three to one. Central Lee still had a breath left trying to pull off yet another upset taking on Danville tonight. A Danville team that is very, very good. Though Central Lee looked like they were going to get the first tally in this ballgame. Bryce Fowler comes free. Point blank almost, but a great play by the Bears goalie right there. And that was pretty much the sum total of Central Lee's offensive output tonight. The Bears had plenty going on right here. Check out how wide open Cole Perkins is on the corner restart. That's just a one shot chipper right there to give his team a one to nothing lead. Would turn out to be the golden goal, but there would be many more for Central Lee, or excuse me, for Danville in this game. This time, Mason Lorber on the breakaway as well. Extends his team's lead to two to nothing. Seven unanswered tonight from the Bears as they end. Central League season. We are done in Southeast Iowa with boys soccer. Final count in this game was 7 to 0. Let's talk, talk some track and field qualifying day in Western Illinois over in Charleston, and we have qualified very well indeed in this area. It starts with the speedster Jacob Scholl, 
qualified in the 100, posted the second fastest time in the 200 meter. He'll run for state championships in both coming up on Saturday. Brady Crane qualifies for state in the 110 meter. Unfortunately for Brady, the Rushville industry star had to scratch out of the 300 meter hurdle, so doesn't get a chance to run there, but he's still alive and kicking, as is the Rushville industry 4x100 meter relay team, which Mr. Crane is a part of. Liberty's 4x800 meter relay team is headed to the finals, as is Alex Blickhan in two different events from Menden Unity. He will qualify in the high jump and the triple jump. Blaze Murphy, the second longest throw from Illini West in the disc today. He's got a great shot at a state championship as well. The news not so good on the tennis front. Quincy High School's two state championship hopefuls, both eliminated on the first day of competition. Andrew Fobble in straight games. The team of O'Connor and Adams. Well, they were knocked out in three. They won their first game today in, or their second game, I should say, in kind of dramatic fashion, but unfortunately fell into the back draw and ended up losing one more there. So O'Connor and Adams eliminated it as well. We'll wrap up tonight with scores from the second night of the Prospect League at last check. No, is this final now? It is final. The Quincy Gems have beaten the Danville Dance tonight 7 to 5 for their first victory of the young season. And the Hannibal Cavemen, they are currently in the eighth inning. No, check that ninth inning, trailing the sliders of Springfield 7 to 6. Is your current score in that ball game? A little calmer day tomorrow, and then Saturday we crank it all back up with a ridiculous overtime of sectional championship action and state track. And I gotta ask, no hits and you still win the game. You ever seen that before? I've not seen that happen before. I've heard about such things. Mm -hmm. I don't think Brigsville Perry cares tonight. Caleb no. Bradshaw, you know <laughs> what? You pitched that well. You deserve to win, and he certainly did tonight.